All right, let's begin. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of our global webinar series. Today's topic is automotive ADAS solutions. My name is Wilmer Compagnoni, lead, who I'm a, the technical marketing lead for Kemet, and I will moderate today's webinar. We're pleased that you found the time to join our webinar, and today's presenter is Alexander Nabel, one of our FAEs in Europe. Hello, Alex. Thanks for taking the time today, and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before you begin. Uh, yes, hello, everybody, and I'm happy to present again today. Um, this is the first session of our automotive campaign series, so we will have the next three Mondays and today dedicated presentations, especially for automotive customers or uh, products which needs to have automotive approved items. And today I want to start with an example with the ADAS um, Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Some information about me, um, I'm a field application engineer in Europe, based in Europe, and my history is that I started uh, also as a research and development engineer for, uh, for two years, then I changed to the sales, and since 10 years now, or more than 10 years, I'm a field application engineer for passive components, uh, starting uh, at a different company, but also uh, I've made experience in the uh, passive world of MLCCs. And now I'm at Kemet since 2017, so already some years. And with this um, expertise, I'm now in the uh, GAM automotive team in Europe, supporting mainly uh, automotive accounts. So now I want to start. Um, and here is the agenda for today. So first, I want to talk two or three slides about the background of um, autonomous driving. Then I'm going deeper in the application ADAS. And then I found two ex uh, examples. One is the camera module and one is a radar module to show you a little bit where you can place Kemet items. And finally, the one which is most important for you is uh, the Kemet AECQ 200 product solutions. So which components fit in the uh, two examples or even more examples? Because most of the uh, ADAS applications have similar requirements to the components. And finally, I give an interesting summary which compares all technologies and shows which technology might be the best solution in your application. So please wait until the end. So first start with the background. Um, when I checked the history of assistance systems, I can see that it goes very uh, back in the past. So the first cruise control, I don't know if you know that, but it was already uh, invented in 1945. And also airbags are already since more than, or since nearly 70 years in the market. The most interesting thing is that the first autonomous driving car was already uh, in 1977, which is actually my birth year, for those who didn't know it. And even the anti-lock braking system, which was invented by Bosch, was just one year later. So most of the assistance systems are already in the market for a long, long time. And interesting uh, things started to happen in the 2000s. So there's adaptive cruise control at the beginning of, the, uh, of 2000. Then there's the blind spot detection in 2004. And uh, in 2006, we have the active brake assist. So technology which are now starting to be more and more famous in the cars are already in, uh, existing since 10 or 15 years. But let's go a little bit deeper because we're not looking for um, only cruise control. We want to have an autonomous driving car. And actually, maybe you heard about it, we have five different levels. Um, first level is the assisted driving. This is what we have seen in the past, the driver is controlling the car. Level two, and this is where we are now standing. This is a partly autonomous driving. So we have the driver still controlling the car and he's viewing the traffic, but we have assistance systems for track keeping and braking and accelerating. And this is what most of the cars today have, but this is the standard. And if you look, there are still three levels to go. The next level, the level three, is highly autonomous driving, which, which means the car can take control for a longer uh, time, maybe on a highway or on a freeway. And the driver is still responsible, but only when he ignores uh, the signals. So the car has still the possibility to stop autonomous driving, and then the car has to take over. The level four, fu fully autonomous driving, is something which means the driver can give the full control to the car 
and start sleeping or maybe um, writing emails. And finally, the level five of autonomous driving means that there's no possibility even for any, cus uh, any uh, car driver to take control of the car. There's no steering wheel and no possibility to take control of the car. And this is where we want to go. But what does it mean to, for, to go from uh, level two, where we are now, so from here to level five? Let's have a look at it. So the application ADAS, what does it mean? Advanced driver assistance systems. Well, this is a very, very big field and it includes many different types. So here are some examples for driver. I mentioned already the adaptive cruise control, blind spot detection, any rear cross traffic alert system, emergency braking assistant, lane departure warning. So these are the most interesting parts. And for all of these types, or also if you know some more, you have special requirements. So the most important thing is to have sensors. This can be cameras, radar, leader. The next step is to have a control. And you need to combine those to a high speed data network with a high bandwidth. And what is very important is to have a secure system which works under harsh conditions. Harsh conditions mean temperature, vibration, maybe water or ice, depending on in which area you are driving. And finally, we want to have a minimized failure rate because any failure in a braking system might occur, uh, might lead to a problem if it's not braking in a in normal, in an unwanted situation. So, and here we are now, we are at level uh, two and level two cars with adaptive cruise control, lane assist and park assistance need roughly 17 sensors. If we want to go to level five, that means we need more than 50 sensors to fully take control uh, or to fully give control to the car. And that means we need to increase our um, sensors and also the electronic behind each sensor by three, by the factor of three. So each sensor, cameras, radar, leader, ultrasonic or deck reconning is uh, multiplied by three just to reach level five. And this brings us to the main requirements of our components. So what are the main compo um, components we need? Normally everything is we, we call it low voltage. Ah, what is low voltage? Is low voltage everything above 100 or 200 or 1000 a volt? There is no rule, there is no standard. But let's say everything in the world of 12 volt, 48 volt uh, or 100 volts is what we call low voltage. And the next thing we need is all components must be small because we need still space for batteries and for some other things in the car. So the electronics must be as small as possible. And therefore, today, I'm focusing mainly on low voltage components, which are small size and which are preferred in an SMD case. So for sure, we have high voltage types, but this is not the task of today's presentation. And now let's take out an example. And I just took one example from Texas Instrument. You can take any similar uh, example. Here, I took a camera module. This is a camera module. Here you can see the number if you want to uh, find it on their web page. And this is a scalable automotive two megapixel camera module. And you can see it's quite small. So this one can be used for mirror replacement or a general camera mirror system or any surround view system or rear camera. So this is not something very strange or something fancy. This is a standard module. And as, as we, I have mentioned before, it's very small and you still need very small components. Let's go a little bit deeper and look at the block diagram. I decided to look mainly on the power supply of, uh, of this camera module because this gives me still a many or various number of possible components where I can uh, look for chemical components. So here in this um, power supply, I already have three buck converters and one LDO um, with programmable voltage outputs. The input voltage is something from 4 to 18.3 volt and the output voltage are given here. Our switching frequency is 2.3 megahertz and with this information I have a list of BOM which I found also in the data sheet of Texas Instrument and I can easily find components which can be used from Camel Electronics. So just the power supply of this camera module gives me something more than 10 items where I can find solutions in chemical electronics. And all of them are small size, are SMD, 
and with fully automotive uh, certification. I will go deeper in each technology at the end of this presentation. Now going into the next example, a radar module. And you can imagine it's similar, it's very small size. Um, and here's again the number if you want to check for it. With this uh, radar module, you can detect objects which are, let's say, 80 meters away from you. So this is for advanced uh, or for uh, distance control or maybe for also a rear view system. So here, lane change assist autonomous parking or cross traffic alert. Also a very um, standard uh, requirement or application. And again, here I've checked for the block diagram. And here now we can find much more items which can be used by Kemet. And here you can see again the bomb. The list is much longer. And if you see it, there's one item which is marked yellow. And this is our new polymer tantalum capacitor. Why did I choose here a polymer tantalum capacitor and not in the last uh, application, um, which was the camera module? Well, it's a switching frequency. In the last application, we had a switching frequency of 2.3 megahertz. And you might know it that tantalum polymer capacitors cannot go up to 2.3 megahertz. So in this application here, I can use the um, tantalum capacitor and I found a perfect solution and which I want to explain later. But also in the design, I can find many, many possibilities for MLCCs. And again, we can see just the power supply of, of uh, a simple uh, reference design I found here on the internet can be uh, or can be placed with 10 up to 20 um, components from Kemet. And that now I want to go deeper and show you what are the main advantages. And let's start with those items we have seen in the last slide the most, the ceramic capacitors. Well, there's still no secret behind uh, ceramic capacitors and uh, our Kemet the ceramic capacitors with ACQ200 certification are similar to those in the market of the competitors. We are very strong here. So what we can offer are voltages from 6.3 up to 250 volts. And for sure, we have also high voltage items. So this doesn't mean we have no 1 kV or 2 kV um, MLCC. This is just because we are talking about low voltage items today. So don't think this is a limitation for us. This is just a limitation for today's application. Case sizes are starting at 4 or 2 and going up to quite big items, 20 to 20. We offer X7R dielectric and also COG. And if X7R with its maximum temperature of 125 degrees is not enough, you can uh, also uh, have X8R or X8L or X8G, which is also available at Kemet. The most important thing in the automotive world is the flexible termination, or some competitors call it soft termination. We offer up to five millimeter flex performance, depending on the component size or what is available. So this is, again, an additional layer to the component, which makes it more flexible, which is very important again to flex because we still know we have some vibrations in the car. If needed, we have a PPAP, a uh, family of PPAP, or in special cases, you can also have product, a part number specific PPAP. And something which is also coming more and more, and I can see it in many customer requests, is also the Volkswagen approved items are also available. If you need more details on this, please let us know or contact your direct sales account. The second group, and I mentioned an example before, is our tantalum polymer capacitors. And here we are now the strongest in the market. I see us at number one. So because we have here something which you cannot find at the competitor, for example, we have series up to 150 degrees. Our standard series T598 and T597 goes up to 125 degrees. The voltage range for now is 2.5 up to 50 volt DC. Please remember there's a D rating depending on your voltage and also depending on the ambient temperature. So the 50 volt maximum should not be applied on a 50 volt item, just you have to decrease it by depending on temperature or voltage by 20%. Case sizes we offer, and this is something I want to show you in the next slide. We offer the standard cases. So the X case or B cases, which are on the market now for a very long time. But also we have this miniaturized items, so S case and P case. 
And this is what we have seen in the last slide, the T597 series. And those are available in a similar 12 or 6 K size or 8 or 5, which makes it possible to use it on the same, nearly same pet than the MLCCs. But please consider the pet geometry is not exactly the same. So to uh, get the best soldering results, please use always the recommended uh, soldering pads, which you can also download for any uh, layout uh, routing program on our webpage. The next family, and in our two examples, I did not show uh, um, this one, but it's still very interesting, is our Kemet aluminum polymer capacitors. And here, this is no aluminum electrolytic. So we are not talking about a wet electrolytic. We are talking about a solid polymer. And this solid polymer, well, the polymer is exactly the same we have seen in the last uh, tantalum capacitors. So this is a nice solution. Why did we change something? Well, for sure, the main thing is that we have an increased life, lifetime with the solid polymer. And this was the main downgrade of the liquid electrolyte aluminum capacitors. Also, we have an improved ESR with the solid polymer. Then we, have, we can offer four different series depending on if you need high cap values, long lifetime, high voltage, or high temperature series. So four different possibilities for solutions for any of your applications. The main advantage of using an uh, aluminum polymer capacitor is still to reach higher capacitance ranges because we can get also with those uh, three series below here, we can still get high capacitance ranges, which are much higher than, for example, an MLCC. But for sure, this component is, is a little bit bigger than an MLCC. And now let's move to the um, inductors. In this case, to the um, metal composite uh, inductors. So we have our MPX and MPXV series. In this case, it's very simple. The V stands for vehicle, which means the MPX is industrial grade and the MPXV is with AC to 200. It's very simple. We have the same components as MPX and MPXV series. So just change or just add the V and then you have a fully automotive qualified item. Well, this is a metal composite shielded inductor, which is uh, now the most used technology. And we are here uh, like our competitors uh, at the top level. Our inductance range is from 100 nanohenry up to 100 microhenry, which covers the most used uh, applications and uh, frequency ranges. Our rated current range goes up to 100 amps. For sure, we do not offer 100 microhenry item with 100 amps. This 100 amps belongs to something uh, with 100 or 150 nanohenry. And the case size is going from five by five millimeters to 22, 20, uh, 22 millimeters by 22 millimeters. You can see here below is a nice list, which is also in the data sheet where you just can find for each dot, we have one existing item. So here, um, this one is a light blue, 10 by 10 millimeters. And then you check just depending on your uh, recommended size and uh, current, uh, sorry, current and um, inductance value you change, uh, you check if your item is available. The most advantage about our MPXV metal uh, composite items is that we are going up to 155 degrees. Why is this so important? Even if your working uh, temperature is just 125, or maybe only 100 degrees, you still have a gap to the maximum. And this means you can maybe exceed the um, rated current because the rated current is always limited and is given by 40K self-heating. But if you are not in a very hot um, ambient temperature, then you can increase or you can just go over the given rated current. And this is an advantage to some competitors who just only have 125 degrees. And the most important thing for you as user is that this item fits to the common use soldering pads from all of the competitors. So with here, we are no single source. You can use our item. And if you need a second source, please take the competitors. Also, we have this MPLCV series. And this MPLCV series to be honest, it's an old series. It's not new. And you can see also from the range here, from the inductance range, 4.7 to 47 microhenry, and also maximum 12 amps, that this is limited. 
And uh, well, this item is also, we have a unique design, so there's no second source. But I want to show this to make one thing clear. We at Kemet have a 99.9% .9 no end of life. So we are still offering this item because we have customers who designed that in and we will still offer this component because we have customers. So be aware we will not have end of life. And even uh, two years ago, we did not have any end of life for bigger MLCC case sizes. So in case you have projects which are running for five years or 10 years, Kemet is the best partner. Now let's come to the summary and, the summary. and now we combine all the information I have given before. The requirements from ADAS are always small size, for sure, low cost. We want still have a high reliability and small size and SMD belongs together. But at the same time, we want to have a fully ACQ 200 certified item. And as you have seen before, our portfolio at Kemet offers a full product range from each technology, which uh, helps you and gives you the full uh, ACQ 200. And now I show you um, something which might be interesting for you. And the most interesting thing for today is the comparison, the capacitor technology comparison. So I have shown which ceramic, tantal polymer and aluminum we have available. And now let's color it a little bit. So red shows you, ah, maybe we are here not the best solution. Yellow is okay and green is the top of the products. And you can see there's no technology which is only green. There are still some red um, areas in each technology. And the most interesting for you, I, I can see your eyes are going down to the price per piece. I know nobody's reading what is written here. You are reading what is here, price per piece and price per microfiber. What does that mean? If you now look at a tantalum polymer capacitor, you will see that the price seems very high in comparison to an MLCC. But this is not a good comparison because a tantalum polymer is not a replacement for one single MLCC. And for those who have seen a presentation of us knows that we want to replace a capacitor bank of MLCC. But if you now compare the price per microfarad, and here I took one example, I can take 100 examples, but I just took the example to reach 100 microfarad at 100 volt. And if I have to reach this cap value at this voltage, then I can see suddenly the ceramic capacitor solution might be the most expensive one because I need many, many items in parallel and also in series to reach that high cap value. And at this point, the tantalum polymer capacitor also the aluminum electrolytic capacitor start to be the cheapest solution. And the same if I want to look at the price per volume. And in this case, I tried to look at the one, uh, 10 microfarad uh, solutions at uh, 100 square millimeters. And I can see that we still have with a tantalum polymer not the quite expensive solution. So please be aware, yes, the tantalum polymer capacitor itself might be expensive, but depending on your application, and we have seen it as output capacitor, if the frequency is below, let's say one megahertz, the tantalum polymer capacitor can be the best solution. In the radar example, we had an example with 47 microfarad. And here with MLCCs, it might be a, a challenge to find something which has no DC bias at 47 microfarad and a voltage range of let's say 10 volts. The aluminum polymer capacitor, yes, here are some yellow and red in the um, high price range for sure. It's not the cheapest solution, but if you want, or if you have to reach a high cap value, which is something in, in thousands of microfarad, then the aluminum polymer or the aluminum electrolytic is the only available solution. And for sure, something about the lifetime, the lifetime in all wet electrolytic is limited to some years depending on your uh, temperature, ambient temperature and your voltage, whereas the tantalum polymer capacitor have nothing which is called um, aging or something like this. And with this nice overview, which you, can, uh, which you will get later or can download, I'm at the end of my presentation. Just want to highlight the next automotive events, which are in, out of the series. So next week, the powertrain applications, the week after we are going into the 48 volt support systems. And then on the 26th of October, we are in, on the topic of onboard charging. 
And with this, I think I have perfectly matched the time. I'm now open for Q&A. Yeah, thank you, Alex. You came in right on time. Uh, yeah, we, we do have some questions, Alex. The first one that came in is about uh, aluminum polymer capacitors and if they can be varnished. Okay, um, varnish. Just, just, uh, just help me with this part. I've never heard this uh, before. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too sure about it. Um, I wonder if the the attendee could maybe clarify uh, what okay. they mean by that question. Alex, the next question yeah, is about um, ACQ 200 qualification screening. Does can you share what we do as it pertains to um, uh, screening for do we screen by lot or um, do we um, do we sell mostly straight catalog components or is it more more common for customers mm -hmm. to to buy automotive parts using the source control drawing okay um, so this is something if I would add these slides to the presentation this uh, um, the presentation would be quite longer so um, yes, for sure, the ACQ 200 pro provides uh, fully qualification uh, for all components. So we have testing and screening um, of 100% of the items, but also we have testing methods when it comes to flex termination, which is not tested with every item because they will destroy the component. And uh, now uh, I just uh, have the, I think it's the vanish, it's, it's, so it is the coating. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I guess you mean the coating. For sure, yeah. uh, whenever it comes to any coating, um, it's still a challenge and uh, we do not give uh, perfect information about this and I can, I, you will not find it in the data sheet. So depending on the items and where you're looking at, I know it's very important that uh, items can be uh, coated for sure. And uh, here are some items are, main, are better than others. Please consider always the temperature of the item. And if you are asking regarding the aluminum polymer, still you need to consider the temperature. So the temperature is one downgrade of the component for lifetime. And the coating is always negative because it uh, it's, has more issues to, uh, and it cannot, it will keep the temperature. And this is more stress to the item. So it is not, let's say it's not the best solution but sometimes I can see that it's not, uh, it's not possible to go without coating or without uh, anything similar. But for sure, please consider the maximum temperature and the maximum voltage of your item. And it might be that this is, uh, should be your most concern, but this is something which can only be answered uh, by knowing your application. Okay, thanks Alex. Mm -hmm. Axel, um, you're, on, you're, you're able to unmute yourself. Is there something you wanted to add? No, I think it was about the vanish. Um, I would like to help the translation. That was the only thing I would mention. But the rest, I think it's, for me, I'm speechless. Uh, there's no, no question anymore. Okay, thank you. All right, Alex, one more question. Um, do you have, do you have some things that are, that our engineering audience should be looking out for when attempting to, rep to, to do an MLCC replacement with polymer? Um, yes, as I mentioned before, um, a one-to-one -one replacement might not be uh, the best way. So if you send me um, your bill of materials with 175 items and ask me to change to polymer, this is not the best way. So the best way is whenever you have, let's say more MLCCs in parallel, or you need to reach um, capacitance range of 10 microfarad and higher, and also a high voltage range, which is still lower than 50 volts, then it, it's possible or it makes sense to think about polymer capacitors. Because with MLCCs, especially with the X7R, you have at higher capacitance and higher voltage range, you have the DC bias effect, which means if you take a 10 volt, 10 microfarad, you will never see the 10 microfarad. Even if you take a 50 volt item, there might be already a 10 volt uh, um, DC bias effect, which means you will never see the 10 microfarad. So the best idea 
uh, or when you need to or want to replace it, it's always for higher cap values, but not too high voltage ranges. And this is where the polymer is much more interesting instead of MLCC. All right. Thank you, Alex. And I think we're almost exactly on time right now. So um, that brings us to the end of our webinar. And thank you, Alex. And thank you, everyone, for attending. And I think you've already covered what we have in our in the upcoming weeks. So we'll be looking forward to seeing you at one of those future webinars. And if you can, please take that uh, survey at the end so that we can uh, better improve these webinars that we deliver to you. So thank you, Alex. Thank you, everyone, for attending. And we'll see you hopefully next week. Yeah, thank you also from my side. Goodbye.